I have no financial uh, disclosures. Uh, in terms of the uh, AAP exam uh, outline, uh, you can see here that um, disorders of the myocardium, pericardium, and uh, endocardium represent about 4%. But I think it's important to realize that a lot of the questions uh, uh, fall into other categories like outpatient practice, the cardiac ICU. Um, so the coverage actually is more than what would be suggested by uh, this look at the outline. Um, what we'll do is take about uh, 15 minutes and talk about myocarditis, and then spend a little bit of time talking about each of the cardiomyopathies, and again, the things that you might uh, encounter on the exam. Uh, in terms of myocarditis, what they want you to know is the clinical presentation lab features, the infectious causes. They want you to be able to formulate a differential diagnosis of new onset LV dysfunction, mostly distinguishing between myocarditis and dilated cardiomyopathy. Know the role of cardiac catheterization and biopsy to know the gross and histologic features of major inflammatory states, uh, the natural history of myocarditis, the appropriate treatment, and then recognize myocarditis man manifestations of some systemic diseases. So we'll do this as a case for format. I will say that um, uh, this is somewhat interactive, uh, and the way I'd created the slides was for certain information to be presented in sequence. If you look at the final version of the slide on your laptop, you're more likely to see the answer. So it might be a bit more interactive if you, um, if you focus on the main screen, but I'll leave it up to you for your studying habits. So this is a 15-year-old previously healthy girl who presents with a three-day history of belly pain and vomiting and a one-day history of labored breathing and decreased energy after returning from summer camp. One week ago, she was seen in the, by the camp nurse for a sore throat and a fever. She had white spots in her posterior oropharynx and a rapid strep test was negative. On exam, she was tachycardic to 150. Her respiration, respirations were quick. She was in moderate respiratory distress with Rawls throughout um, the lung fields. A prominent S3 gallop. Any question with an S3 gallop, it's automatically a heart failure question. Uh, and uh, hepatosplenomegaly. Um, I'm sorry, that's a holosystolic murmur at the apex. Her liver is five centimeters below the costal margin. Her extremities are cool and clammy with diminished pulses. Uh, this is her electrocardiogram. The main features here to note is that it's sinus tachycardia, with generally with small voltages, and those are kind of the classic uh, features you see. It's a little bit different from dilated myopathy, where the heart's had a chance to dilate and develop very large uh, voltages. Uh, this is a chest radiograph that's typical. Again, uh, there's pulmonary edema, and the heart hasn't had a chance to really enlarge, so the cardiac silhouette actually looks pretty close to normal. These are typical still images that you might see on the boards uh, for myocarditis. Um, what's worth noting is that the myocardium is not thick, um, as you will see with dilated myopathy, um, and these are just two classic images that you could see. So what is the most likely diagnosis here? It's obviously myocarditis. So let's talk about a little, a little bit about myocarditis and the definition. Um, the definition is, it is inflammatory disease of the heart muscle, and this is by the World Health Organization. It's nice to have one of the shortest definitions, I think, in cardiology. It just takes one line. Fulminant myocarditis um, is myocarditis with hemodynamic compromise within two weeks of a viral infection. So the tempo is like a hurricane. It's fast on, it's fast off, and um, has generally has a pretty good prognosis. Uh, by contrast, acute myocarditis, which almost sounds less bad than fulminant, um, has a less distinct onset, and it's actually more likely to progress to DCM. And those are the three major definitions you might encounter.